Thanks for joining us at Ride On Replicas, where we're proud to bring you the best scale model kit reviews on the planet. This review is brought to you in part by Rogers Hobby Center in Saginaw, Michigan, where the fun begins. This review covers the Chevy S10 Street Sleeper. It's a 125 scale kit from Monogram, number 85-4503. Now the Chevy S10 is a compact pickup, first launched around 82, as a quarter ton pickup. It was meant to replace the old Chevy Love which was imported as a stopgap after the Arab oil embargo. Now these things are seen everywhere. They got put into cities, into farms, all over the place. And although they were just a small truck, I've seen these things act as real workhorses. Now this uh, kit is billed as a street sleeper and it includes a turbocharged V6 engine. The uh, actual S10s were offered a V6 engine uh, after uh, a 4.3 liter V6 in fact around uh, 88 but before that it was just four cylinders and smaller V6s. Now you can still see these units today. I saw one yesterday on the road. Now the kit was first introduced by Monogram as a new tool in 93 it's been through a couple of uh, revisions and then in 99 it had uh, new parts added. Now this most recent label released in 2020 also includes parts for the uh, 285 horsepower turbocharged V6 engine. There's 107 pieces molded in white, clear, chrome plated and rubber along with a nice decal sheet. And when you're done the kit is about seven and a half inches long three and a quarter inches wide and two and three quarter inches tall. And, uh, oh, uh, I think I hear Newt back there. Um, he's got a question about this one. Uh, hey, Newt, uh, he's our uh, program director. Uh, wh what's your question? Why is this pickup called a street sleeper? Well, that's a good question, Newt. A street sleeper is a vehicle that has a hopped up engine and is meant to go uh, pretty fast uh, comparatively uh, you know based on the stock versions so what happens is uh, people who get street sleepers they don't adorn them with any indication that maybe they've got a hot motor under the hood or set it up for drag racing but uh, after the race the uh, chagrined loser typically asks what do you got under that thing so it's pretty fast they were pretty fast actually with a, a turbocharged V6. I would, um, I would say this uh, truck could probably, uh, if it had a ton all covered, have reduced some drag in the back, uh, maybe top out over 90 miles an hour in the quarter mile. Here are the contents of the kit. And as you can see, Ravel's done a good job of uh, keeping the flash down. So well laid out uh, uh, and easy to find. Uh, this is a pretty nice kit to build. Now we'll be using mostly Model Master liquid cement, sometimes super glue for, for finicky parts and white glue for the um, windshield and glass parts. Remember to heed the safety and use uh, guidelines by the manufacturers for any of the products that you see here in the review. Here are the tires for the kit. They're beefy non-branded tires but they're not so much as to give away the secret of this street sleeper. Here are the decals for the kit. The colors and register are great. You can see there's even under hood decals there. Now you'll be probably needing to use some setting solution for the longer stripes. But as this is a street sleeper version, we decided not to embellish it with any of the hot rod insignia. Construction starts with the engine, so grab these basic parts, the block heads, cylinder, uh, valve covers, etc., including the, uh, the chrome oil pan and assemble those uh, uh, that's pretty uh, basic stuff they go together very well um, and uh, remove any imperfections from the parts uh, you know any sprue attachment points etc or minor flash and then uh, glue the intake to the top of the engine and the distributor to the intake uh, oriented so that the flat side goes towards the back of the engine and then add the uh, water pump the AC pump assembly to the front and now glue the starter to the side and the fan uh, to the belts along with the alternator and the power steering pump. Now we're going to glue the uh, uh, clutch fan on after we're painting, we've painted the assembly. 
Next, gather up the exhaust manifolds. The transfer case halves the turbo with its pipes in the airbox. And I painted the engine a satin black, the belts flat black, the training and transfer case are flat aluminum XF16. And the exhaust has some uh, rusts on the pipe. Um, the airbox and the starter detail are painted silver. Now after removing the plating um, and paint from gluing surfaces, glue the fan clutch, alternator airbox, transfer case, turbo, and exhaust manifolds to the engine assembly. I gave the aluminum and silver parts a, a little wash with some Tamiya black panel line accent. This is basically uh, a product that replicates simply adding a lot of thinner and a little paint uh, so that you can get some accent on the highlights. We're going to deviate from the instructions at this point. It has you place the engine in the frame, but I decided to paint some things first to make it a little easier to do that. First I glued the bed sides to the bed tub, leaving the rear sides loose so that I could place the lights in the tailgate later. Now prep the frame, the gas tank, exhaust, hood, cab, bed, and the tailgate for paint. Remove any parting lines or flash that need to be uh, removed. And then I gave the parts a coat of Stenorex uh, white primer uh, to help with the paint adhesion and make the turquoise look a little brighter. I had to mix the turquoise color to kind of match the box art. I used some X14 sky blue, a little X25 green, and some X2 white to get the right look. And just keep stirring until you like what you see. Now it took more white than I thought it would to lighten it up. Now after the primer, I painted the sides of the body gloss white X2, and when that had dried thoroughly, I masked it off and painted the remaining parts with the turquoise. Now once the paint's dried, remove the masks. Now I had uh, painted the frame black, uh, semi-gloss black, and the exhaust uh, flat aluminum and rusted, and then bent the aluminum, uh, blending the aluminum in towards the rear of the exhaust. I also painted the gas tank flat aluminum with flat black highlights. Finally, glue the engine into the frame as well as the gas tank and now glue the exhaust to the engine in the frame. Now we begin work on the suspension and frame and clean up the rear axle and leaf springs and paint those with a, a I used Stenel Res, it's kind of a semi-gloss black primer. Remove any primer from the glue joints and gluing points and glue the springs to the axle. Next, remove the imperfections from the front suspension parts, the torsion bar assembly, half shafts, A-arms, differential, shocks, and steering linkage. Again, these had already been uh, primed with the black. Now glue the differential halves together, and then the drive line is molded to the differential. Now glue the uh, half shafts to the differential assembly. And while the glue is still pliable, glue the front assembly to the frame and glue the steering linkage to the front axle parts. If you move quickly, you can glue the shocks to the torsion bar assembly and then glue these parts to the front axles, uh, parts and the frame. Next, glue the rear axle assembly and rear drive line to the frame and the engine. Finally, glue in the rear shocks. The fitment of the suspension parts was good, so no adjustment was necessary to ensure that all the four tires were touching. I painted the suspension parts a satin black and flat black in accordance with the directions, which by the way you'll find at the end of the review. Gather the parts that you see here for the interior, clean them up, and then that includes the seat halves, the panels, the shifter, the interior tub, the dash, all those parts for the uh, interior. And after uh, all the cleanup, I painted those with a medium gray paint, and then I painted the steering column shifter in the center of the steering wheel, and some interior details with satin black. I finished detailing with a chrome pen, and now place the decals for the gauges, the steering wheel, dash, and the headrests. I used a little setting solution to get the decals to conform to the surfaces. After removing paint from all the glue surfaces, glue the interior door panels, seats, center console with a shifter into the interior tub, and next glue the two dash parts together and glue them to the interior tub. Finally. Uh, place the glue uh, and the to the steering wheel and the steering column and glue them into the dash. Next we're going to be using the cab, the dome light, visors, firewall, and interior parts. First I painted the firewall flat black 
and detailed that with a little gold for the brake booster and silver for the other details. And then I glued the firewall to the cab. After that it dried, I glued the visors in that I had painted a medium gray with the interior parts and the dome light to the roof of the cab. I left the roof of the cab body color, but I could have painted it an interior color as well. I think it depends on your trim level. But finally, glue the interior tub into the cab and test fit it first and it fits very well. Now we can work on the bed and um, remove any imperfections from the tail light deflect reflectors, the lenses and the bed braces and then glue the tail light reflectors to the tub um, of the bed and, and the sides and place the tailgate between the sides. You can now glue the sides fully onto the tub. The tailgate can be left open or, or closed if you don't use any glue and I thought to uh, fit it it was a little too loose there and set kind of crooked on its own so I glued my tailgate into place. That's up to you. I painted the braces flat black and glued them to the underside of the bed and finally I chose uh, the style of lens that I wanted. There was two choices and I painted the frame and the lens of satin black and the top section of the lens is red and left the backup light clear. Remove the rims from the chrome sprue now and be careful not to damage the visible plating while removing the sprue attachment points. Remove the imperfections from the rim backs and paint those flat black. Then scuff the tire tread area on some sandpaper and remove paint and chrome from the gluing surfaces and glue the rim halves together inside the tires. Now after the wheels and the tires have dried, press them onto the axles and if you do not use uh, some glue if, if you want the tires to spin. Now we can mate the uh, bed to the cab. So grab those two parts and slide the back of the cab into the tabs on the front of the bed. The fit is pretty nice. Add some glue to fix it in there permanently and now test fit uh, the body onto the frame. Check for the gluing points and then take it back off and scrape any paint from those points and then glue the body to the frame making sure everything's symmetrical. Next we'll be working with these uh, underhood parts so clean up the radiator, the fan shroud, the hoses, the cold air box, the steering gear box, the skid plate, and the master cylinder. And after the, uh, that paint the parts flat black and then paint the master cylinder silver. The tank is white and then leave the lid a flat black. Now glue the uh, steering gear box uh, to the shaft uh, on, and shaft to the main frame uh, and then the suspension and the firewall. Now even though the fit on these things is pretty nice, you should do some test fitting to make sure you glue uh, it into proper position. Now glue the fan shroud to the radiator and then glue the radiator to the frame. The hoses go in between the engine and the radiator and glue the cold air box and, and an oil filter uh, and the master cylinder in place. Now not shown in the parts uh, photos are the AC line and the top radiator support brace. These are shown in place in the final photo there with the uh, red arrows pointing to those. Now finally glue the skid pan onto the underside of the frame. Next we'll add the windows so get the uh, front and rear windows out and I decided to use the slider in the back for the back window it's an option. Paint the frame of the back window satin black along with the frosted area of the front windshield and after the paint dries use some clear parts cement or white glue to glue the front and rear glass into position. Now we'll move again to the back and grab the rear bumper and remove the chrome plating from the gluing points and glue it to the frame. The directions show the license plates being chrome but they're not um, and I painted the plates aluminum. I glued the plate to the rear bumper and it looks a bit thick uh, but I won't be using the other one uh, on the front. Now we'll add the wipers, remove any imperfections from the pieces and then paint them a satin black. When they're uh, dry you can glue them into place in the holes on the cowling. Back to the front, remove the grill, front bumper headlight reflectors and mirrors from the chrome tree and remove any imperfections. Now remove the headlight lenses and the turn signal lenses from the clear sprue. The directions show part 104 for the signal lenses but 106 is, act, is the actual part you'll need. 
Now glue uh, the headlight reflectors to the back of the grill and then glue the bumper to the grill. Now using the clear part cement glue the headlight lenses and turn signals into place and paint the signals uh, with a clear amber and the grill emblem is a titanium gold. Now glue the mirrors into the mirror housings and set them aside until final assembly so they don't get broken off during assembly or decal work. Glue the grill to the front of the truck after test fitting and removing any paint and chrome from the glue points. Now I decided not to use the front spoiler on the truck because the pictures on the box didn't have it and I thought it looked better as a street sleeper without that. Construction of the kit is finished um, and you'll have just a few pieces left over. These are optional clear pieces etc uh, that I didn't use. The decals are next and as I mentioned uh, I didn't use too many of them for this street sleeper but the, um, the underhood decals here are a pretty nice touch. Now for all of the decals use plenty of warm water and uh, then place them into position. You may need some setting solution. After the hood was done, I put decal 38 on the windshield uh, and then the sleeper license plate decal on the rear and uh, the S10 turbo decal on the fenders and the emblems on the wheel caps. Uh, place the Chevrolet decal 18 on the tailgate and the Got Boost decal in the back window. Lastly, place the door handle and the door lock decals and once again, I used some Microsol uh, setting solution to make those decals conform to the contours. Glue the side mirrors into the holes on the doors. And then finally, give your uh, model a little coat of uh, pledge floor gloss, sealing all the decals and paint into position. Well, there you have it. This nice little kit lends itself to so many different adaptations. You could turn it into a work uh, truck, uh, suburban uh, uh, garden tractor hauler, uh, even a street sleeper with them big engines and a little turbo addition. Now it was a fun model to put together. There was just a slight warp in the hood that came out with a little heat and some pressure. And it would be great for anybody who wants to have a glue kit to start with. The fit was good and there was some option, uh, options for customizing. When you're done, it looks great and it really has an attractive appeal with the two-tone scheme which was pretty common on the S10. So if I were you, I'd buy one and put it on my shelf. Well, we hope you like this step-by-step -step premium scale model kit review so that you don't miss any more. Please subscribe to our YouTube channel by clicking on the icon in the lower right of any of our reviews. Or you could find us on Facebook or our website, rightonreplicas.com. Thanks.